Well, great balls of fire, Bubba. What happened, Bilford? That crazy son of a sow blew right through that four-way stop of Main Street and plowed into my cowboy Cadillac. Your what? My pickup truck. And I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, Ted. Oh, quit your bitching, Buford, and talk with those side busters at the Advocates Law Firm. When I got busted up last month, well, shoot, they made sure those snakes at the insurance company played fair. Boy, howdy. Even that creepy so-and-so Kyle earned his keep. So if you get injured, the Advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Hey, all, it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Question. What was that moment that you realized that maybe your job was dangerous? And we have a bunch of emails here from the men's room at KISW.com. You've got mail. You've got mail. Coming from our question, guys. Ola, I have worked in the healthcare system for 25 years. I first realized my job was dangerous when I contracted chicken pox from a patient. Ended up getting the chicken pox all over, outside, inside of my body. Not fun. And then 15 years ago, when the swine flu in SARS was going around, we had to learn how to put on biohazard suits. So happy I'm not doing that work anymore. You guys rock that from a lovely Barbara. Ooh, boy. First trip, training for B and Railroad. Show up and the fire department and ambulance are in the yard in Ballard. It's in a little hill, and a train got away, and a trainsman tried to stop it by using the handbrake. He got a couple cars done, and when it got to the end of the tracks and hit another uh, it cut uh, of the cars, it slung him off the car that he was under and then threw him under it and Jeez. cut him in half. Ah! That was day one of my job. That from Todd. How's your first day? Don't want to talk oh, about God. it. Before I joined the Iron Workers Local 86 in Seattle, I was a commercial fisherman in Alaska. Captain was a neurotic, pathological liar who did anything and everything better than anyone, and he'd occasionally try to prove that by coming down on deck and exhibiting his superhuman skills. During cod season, we'd have to dump the fish on the deck, open up their neck in order to drain the fish's blood before they went into the chiller tanks. A lot of these cods were easily 100-plus pounds, so we'd use a short gaff hook so we could stand in one place instead of four guys with big, sharp knives chasing slippery fish on a rocking boat. Captain loves himself, comes down on deck with a knife, grabbed the gaff hook from one of the guys, and proceeded to grab a couple of cod and bleed them like he was wild E. Coyote. When he tried to took, uh, hook another fish... He hooked me by the calf and yanked me off my feet. That's when he threw his knife down and climbed the ladder back into the wheelhouse. And yeah, he was my wife's brother. Oh, oh, damn, man. Guys, a friend worked today, a corn and soybean processing plant. He was steam cleaning a silo. The steel grating was removed to clean the auger gear drive. The on-off button was not locked out or tagged out. Someone started the auger drive, and my friend was unable to see that it was turning due to steam. He stepped into the auger and was immediately drawn in. Uh, obviously, he was not going to survive. He was immediately ground up. All they found was his boot oh, with his foot still in the boot. And from the Elk Plain Drifter. As we move on to some of the uh, birthday emails, Good. guys. Yeah, all the yeah, Bajolas. Yeah. It's my 30-second trip around the sun. How about some turtle wax with an owl hitting the window? And uh, maybe uh, the dirty Germans giving a squatch call. Love you guys long time. That from Boomhauer. Yeah, I have seen these shows where the experts go out and do the squatch calls and oh, 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 oh. But it is quite simple. When I want to see the Bigfoot, he'll squatchy, squatchy. Yeah, I just try to make sure I don't get too deep in the squatch. <laughs> want to stay dry. Yeah, he is fuzzy everywhere. I'm pulling hair out of my mouth for days. There's only one place he's not fuzzy. If you have to find it. <laughs> Lure him in with some beef jerky. Mm -hmm. Those commercials are great. They are awesome. 
Guys, I want to wish my awesome, beautiful, loving wife, Brandy, a happy birthday. She works hard and uh, deals with me, so deserves only the finest. Uh, let's see here. Maybe uh, Coach Ted can give her some tips on how to cope with 10 hours a day in meetings. You guys make our day. That from Colby. 10 hours in meetings. A coach has a lot of advice for you. Yeah, you know, a lot of people go coffee, uh, you know, work your mind in the off time so it stays right. Personally, I say marijuana. <laughs> you get blazed to sell. You go in that meeting. And then about halfway through, five hours in, you want to pull out a little mint because your breath stinks. It's inedible. Oh, well played. Ah, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. God, that would be nuts. I was going to say, get a different Ten job. hours on a Zoom. Mm. Guys, I uh, hope the... Uh, we got to kill with the Zooms. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, every time your kid gets in trouble, you don't have to Zoom the principal. That's a good point. You really don't. Yeah. Guys, hey, first teachers, you don't need to comment that the kid's getting hugged before the father's going to work. Just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> guys, oh, well, look at that. She's got a hug. Well, like, come on, man. Just do your goddamn class. <laughs> I want to give a shout-out to my uh, sister, Nancy. Give her some shotgun gets and have Mickey and Goofy tell her how she should spend her birthday during these COVID times. Love you, sis. That from your brother, Manuel. Get! 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 Well, guys, for your birthday, if you want to have a good time, I say, Nancy, Nancy, drop your pantsies. You know what you could do, Nancy? Find a nice little mouse. Make sweet, sweet mouse love to him. That's what Mick recommends. <laughs> He's not biased or nothing. No. Also, you can come to one of the parks. The one in Florida is open, but it's not very busy. Is it open? Yes. Hmm. Okay. I don't think the one in California is. No, it's not yet. I don't really talk to anybody down there. Oh, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Holy guys. I'm giving myself a shout out for my birthday because I know my wife will not, as promised. But she did give me some uh, men's room original sausage, so all it's good from uh, Uli's down at Pike Place. If I can get the dirty Germans to let her know what we're going to do with the sausage, followed by you like that, my day would be complete. Uh, thanks, guys. That from Lauren, a proud eye patch wearing former Renoite. <laughs> yeah, as that men's room sausage first, you will watch your wife swallow other men's room sausage. Still in the package, still warm. Yeah, so I know you think it's going to be some kind of dirty joke, yeah, but you're, honestly, you should just cook it. Enjoy it. It's delicious. Yeah. So Have after, sex first. Yeah. So after that or before that, make sure you stick something else between the buns. What else we got here? Here's another one from Reno. My God. Reno. Wait God. a minute. Two for Reno? No, there can't be two That's got to be the same Reno. person, right? Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, that's the same person. All right, you're right. And oh guess God, what? Guess so, what? Hey. No way! It's two people yeah. from Reno. Guess what, Lauren? Your uh, your loving wife did send in a birthday request for you. Just so you know. Oh man! Yeah. So that's so crazy. We knew that. Now mm-hmm. she's gonna poke out your other eyebrow because they have the same last name on their email. Bitches, this is a uh, dirty dump trucker from a long line of dirty mother truckers. My dad turned sixty two today. He thought uh, everything I know uh, taught me everything I know about trucking. Uh, can you line him up with a big old bong rip and the dirty Germans talking about being a dirty mother trucker and being close to retirement. Thank you guys. Love the show. That's from Ryan. Yeah, there is no need to be close to retirement when you are in fact a mother trucker. Once you are a mother trucker, you want to keep trucking mothers. (laughs) Yeah, some of those mothers are so great. They come with those extra axles. Yeah, and you can always say, ah, do you want to see my pizza built? Yeah, actually, let me just see your mud flaps. Yeah, that's German for penis. My pizza build. <laughs> All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Tell you, tell you, tell you. Yaz a Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, Men's Room Live.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, Shrine of Flash. Thank you, Bob. A couple extra emails here. Uh, guys catching up on the podcast, and you guys were talking about taxes. For the past five years, the IRS has sent me a check for $1.00. I've kept them all because why the hell not? When I don't cash it, they send another. Uh, here's a picture. That from David. Uh, hola, uh, boys. A thrill. You like a screwball and you like Reese's. Mix your screwball with Kahlua and it tastes like Reese's. You're welcome. That from Jungle Jivin' Rockin' Bebopin' Curtis J. Buckwheat. 
Well, Buckwheat, the problem is this. I already drink too much, and you're right. That would be delicious. I would never stop drinking. Mm -hmm. I want to try that one. Dude, it's... I'll just stop. Screwball is very good. Uh, it cannot be in my home because once the bottle is open, it shall be consumed. Did you oh, do that no. over the weekend? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. I haven't I'm tried this before. Uh, well, you haven't told me about this before. Listen, you wanted me to drink less. If I told you about this and you bought it, which you just did, you're about to find out why I didn't bring it up. And that night, it was gone. Bitches, uh, during when you were talking about getting naughty, Miles could not wrap his head about his partner using a very large, extra large toy. Try it. The feeling for you if you go after a large item is really different and interesting. And please let Ted know it's rum and mojitos. Okay. <laughs> Covering all the bases here. You know what? I was so wrong about it. Now I'm so confused. I'm not positive what it is. I have forgotten. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, what was I saying it was? Tequila? I don't uh, remember. Vodka, I, maybe? Is that what you said? I don't think you said vodka. It's, it's getting it's worse. Yeah, yeah. Right, because... And one more as far as things that were taken from an employer, guys. I stole $68,327,000 from my employer. Put it in a safety deposit box. Still worked for him for five years. I quit and took a trip around the world for six months. Love you guys. That from the felonious traveler. Please do not say my real name on the air. Now, the men's room wants to know who sucks less. Time for Who Sucks Less. Team of Trojo, you bring us three stories from the news each and every week. All of them suck to some degree, but it, uh, it's uh, up to us here to determine out of the three stories which one sucks the least. Now, if you like KISW on Facebook or you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live, the debate is already underway on Who Sucks Less. Yes, indeed. And we'll be traveling around the country. We'll be in Arizona. We go to Pennsylvania. Then we'll head north to the fine state of New York. But let's begin specifically in the city of Phoenix where a man is in trouble after what they're calling a spat with employees at a local restaurant. Justin Young, he's accused of indecent exposure and disorderly conduct, the incident that led to Young's arrest. Apparently, he was told to leave the restaurant because the restaurant was closing. Well, he refused to leave and then he began to yell at the employees. But once he was out of the restaurant, he receded, proceeded to pull down his pants and urinated on the door as he exited. The investigators then claimed that he also exposed himself to employees, as well as obscenely gesturing him. Now, let's face it, if you're going to pee on a door, obviously they can see your genitals. What they're saying is he peed on the door, and when he was done peeing, he made it a point to keep his penis out there to see it, and then flipped them off when they took a gander at his goods. Now, he apparently already had a warrant out for his arrest. Uh, anyway, he was released, believe it or not, without bail. That, but he's scheduled for he had a, a warrant out for his arrest. He had a he was warrant released without bail. He had a warrant out for his arrest. He didn't turn himself in on the first arrest. Why would right. you think the hell if you put him out on bail that he would come back for anything else? I don't know. So again, you have a warrant for your arrest. Now you get arrested, you get your peed, show your D, all this stuff, and they're still like, eh, let him out on bail. I don't know what he's doing, but he's living right. right. I'm assuming that he has money. Yeah, and not all warrants are equal. True, that's true, that's true. But still, I feel like if you get arrested while there's a warrant, whatever, I digress. I had a warrant. Yeah, but you, you made it a point. You made it a point. No, to no, no. Not so I had the warrant years before that. So it was a bench warrant. I forgot uh, to show up for a ticket. Uh, oh, oh. Say, everybody did, you even, did you even know at the time? No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what sucks with those. Like, you, wait, what? You, you have no idea. <laughs> right. you know? So it was like, you, you get popped for something else and the cops are like, hey man, there's a there's warrant out there. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? You get the How much do you sweat in that moment? Like, wait, what? It's terrible. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's why I avoid cops. I know there's eight warrants on me. Uh, now let's go to Pennsylvania where authorities are investigating one of the most dangerous things that could happen. A bomb was sent to a 911 center employee. The bomb in question, however, was a glitter bomb. And look, nobody likes glitter, but I really do not feel that you need police involvement. They felt different. When open, the package shot glitter all over, and county officials say it's no laughing matter. Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavanta, she confirmed the investigation. The so-called bomb was sent to an employee back on September 29th. Now, sources close to the investigation, they said county detectives were led to the Plains Township Municipal Computers, one of which was used to track the package during the delivery process. Those same sources say the motive is not yet known. The employee was also questioned, why was the package sent to me? I do not know. Now, attempts to name the name of a firefighter who is the focus of the investigation have been unsuccessful so far. My question is why this is a police investigation. It was a, and again, glitter bombs are annoying as hell. I just don't know that you need police involvement. 
And now let's go up the road to upstate New York, right outside of Rochester, in fact. It's spelled Chile, it's pronounced Chai Lai, where a Chai Lai Central School District bus driver is facing multiple criminal charges after she was found to be driving with the blood alcohol content higher than the legal limit. And she did it with students on board, but it wasn't her driving that got her caught. But at one point, when there were still six students on the bus, she turned around and said, quote, don't tell nobody, we're going to stop at McDonald's. Which she did with all the kids in the bus. She grabbed two of the students who helped her carry the food back out to the bus. Those students then relayed the story because they didn't realize she was drunk, but they found her behavior, and I quote, odd. Well, at that point, they did an investigation, and the, the real giveaway here was that they found her unresponsive, passed out behind a wheel in the bus garage. She has since been arrested and obviously relieved from her job. So again, the three situations here. We have the man in Phoenix who peed on the restaurant door. He'd been asked to leave because they're closing. So he peed on the door, exposed himself, flipped him off. He gets arrested. We have the glitter bomb incident at the 911 call center in Pennsylvania. Somebody opened it. They got glittered. Apparently, this pissed them off enough that they have the police involved in this. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have the drunk bus driver who treated uh, the unfortunate students to McDonald's. Ted, we can both agree that the drunk bus driver sucks the most, right? Yeah. Putting kids' lives in danger. Granted, she didn't take them to McDonald's. I don't I know, know they that's got the only anything. saving grace. But uh, at the same point in time, mean, that's, that's not cool. So we, we can already say that that one sucks, I guess, the most. I would agree with that. Now, as far as a glitter, quote, bomb, mm -hmm. all right, just because it's a bomb pop does not mean it's a bomb. Just because your favorite pizza place is the bomb doesn't mean it's a bomb. A glitter bomb is not a bomb. It's, it's just, annoying. It sprays but... glitter everywhere. It doesn't mean it's a bomb. You don't have a balloon and pop and go, I have a balloon bomb because it makes a noise and blows up. Sure. It's not a bomb. But it's still a pain in the ass. <laughs> now, the guy who <laughs> peed on the door, right? On the door, yes. Everybody's seen a penis. You've seen a penis, you've seen two. You've seen three, you've seen ten. Maybe you've seen 50. doesn't matter. Either way, not that that's the greatest thing in the world, but if I had to pick between cleaning urine outside off of a building mm -hmm. or cleaning up glitter on the inside of my office, I'm going to take a hose, I'm going to spray the pee off, and I'm probably pretty well good. So as far as having to clean up this mess, I say that the glitter bomb guy... He doesn't suck the least. It's the guy who peed on the glass door. I'm inclined to agree only because I feel like that's something I would do if I was hammered and felt... <laughs> I mean, honestly... And I, I would also send a glitter bomb to somebody. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I agree. Those glitter bombs, it sounds funny, but like... Somebody got glitter bombed in my neighborhood like a week ago. It has rained. The glitter is still there. It's yeah. outside. It does not go away. It doesn't. And I'm with you. Like, look, the restaurant employees... Look, at the end of the day, we're going to fill up a pitcher of hot water... Throw it on the handle. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I mean, that's terrible, but he sucks the least. I think so, too. Yeah. Because it's easily clean upable. Right. <laughs> you know Glitter I mean? is impossible to clean up. You can vacuum. You can do all this stuff. It's a funny prank because, first of all, listen. The guys in that restaurant, they did not know the guy outside of the restaurant peeing on the door. The people in the 911 office, they know exactly who sent that? The deal is they just don't want to call out the firemen who did it. They know that these guys have been going back and forth. Sure, about something, right? Yeah, exactly. You know just, what's harder than cleaning up glitter? No. Marbles. <laughs> 500 marbles. Five gallons of marbles. You can't vacuum marbles? <laughs> you cannot <laughs> sweep marbles. <laughs> Debate continues on Who Sucks Less. If you like KISW on Facebook, you are listening to The Men's Room. Bro. Gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. way. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way. Can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. 
The men's room is in progress. 99.9 KISW and KISW HD1 Seattle. Coming up in just minutes, we will drink. We will toast with a shot of the day. Hey, we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, a quick check in with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, there's a town in Quebec that has just voted to change their name. Okay. Their name used to be asbestos. I heard about that. I mm-hmm. guess they used to mine asbestos or something back before they knew it was no. going to kill people. <laughs> right. So yeah. the, town, the town was all about? All right. So what did they change it to? Uh, to be honest with you, I'm going to say it wrong because it's Quebec, so it's going to be French. I believe it's Val de Suisse, but Ooh. it's Valley of the Springs. Oh, Valley of the Springs. Okay. That are contaminated with asbestos. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's the full name, yeah. Uh, police in Florida are on the lookout for scammers that threaten seniors by saying that they've missed jury duty. They basically say that they need to pay thousands of dollars or they're going to come and arrest them. Hmm. You know how easy it is to get out of jury duty? They're not going to come right. after you for jury duty. The problem is, is that's why they're targeting seniors. I know. Because yeah, things are I changing know. and the technology's better. And nothing is more frightening to people that just live normal lives. And we got the cops coming. They're on their way. Or we owe money. Right. You know what I mean? Thousands of dollars to right. the government. What happened to the good old days when you just walked up behind them, beat them, and took their money? Right. You know, what's with all these sophisticated scams? I tend to live on the razor's edge of, okay, if the police are coming to arrest me, let them get here, and then I'll explain myself. My thought is, all right, I'm leaving. Just haven't been here in three days. Don't get Mike. Mike's staying. I'm out. That's right. You know what? Maybe I am in trouble. I don't know. I didn't. It wasn't on my tax return. Do you say but. they're coming? Bad, bad. What a great episode. So tomorrow is 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a repeat. I'm not here. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, police in Florida are on the lookout for scammers that threat. Uh, sorry, I just actually read that one. I didn't take it off my desk. You just Mike. love the idea so much. I can't. love it. Mike, I got bad news. Just got a call. You missed jury duty. Dog. Got it. Uh, if you give me a hundred bucks, though, I can explain it to them. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> a man in Iowa bit another man's nose off during a flight. Yeah, completely off. Uh, so you read the story, Miles? Yes, I did. What, what, led, what leads to the point that uh, I just want to avoid that particular conversation where I might get my nose bitten off? I, I, I don't know. They just got into it, went to the ground, guy bit his nose off. That's a little bit more than into it, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miles I mean, is underselling it. Yes. Well, they got a little testy and he my, bit his well, nose Miles off. Miles is right, though. They got into it and things escalated. <laughs> I mean, that's not my move, but... <laughs> At least I'd still have, like, you know, nose left. Yeah, you'd be fine. Right, exactly. Is that where we're at nowadays? Well, bite like, noses? Right, like, the but fight is going to go ahead and... Completely off. Right, the fight's going to excel to the point. spit it out, Mike. <laughs> we're going to bite this man's God, nose off. I mean... To where we just see a blank cavity on his face. Right. Happy right. Halloween. Happy Halloween. He can be red skeleton for Halloween. Ah, I mean, we, God. was he scared, or was he winning the fight, then bit it off? I'm hoping he was getting his ass kicked and felt like there was nothing else he could do. Then if you kind of go. Face, right. If you've got your down. face on another man's face, chances are he's not punching you. That's too close proximity. Right? Yeah, he's ground and pounding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, or that's, where, that's him. where the referee comes in and separates even boxers right. when their heads are butting against each other. Goodness, <laughs> someone in Michigan. Bro- <laughs> it's insane, man. It sounds like something out of a movie. Right? Someone in Michigan broke into a local brewery and stole some beer before bringing their kids in and stealing soda. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Dad, no. Dad, where's the soda? All right, come Which on in. I was in. about to say, I don't... Do breweries have a lot of soda? They have enough to satisfy the kids. It's a brew pub, maybe? It's fair. Okay. Yeah, a be. lot of brew pubs make some really good sodas. Really? Yeah, they'll yeah. have, like, bottled root beer and stuff like that. I, I mean, that guy's really ginger ale. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. They I just, know. At first, I started having a little bit of faith in humanity when I read the story, and it literally said they stole some beer. I'm like, okay, so they didn't clean them out. They sure. didn't come in with a five-gallon bucket and grab some beer. Mm-hmm. But then they brought their kids in. Now you just ruined it. See, I think that shows humanity. But this guy could have just stole beer for himself. He said, get in here, kids. And he's spending time with his family, Mike. Yeah, family time's important, Why Mike. Why don't you look on the brighter side wow. of things? You know what I mean? These are moments that we need to connect with the My young bad. ones. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking at life all God. wrong. We don't just eat dinner together. We steal together. We steal soda pop And together. it's not like he got his kids beer. So he's not irresponsible. Fair. He's just kind of drunk. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, a new survey ranked the 20 <laughs> most important inventions of all time. Oh, plumbing. I've got to, oh, not bad. I've actually got the top 10 right here. So Ted's going to go with plumbing. I need to go plumbing. Uh, I mean, on that tip, I'll say toilet. The toilet, all right. 
Mr. Hill. Sadly, I'll say the internet. The internet? Okay. Here we go. Here are the top ten most important inventions of all time. Number ten, airplanes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Right. We, I, we I pay enough for them. I have often had that, that conversation back when I used to drive over to Spokane. It takes four hours for us to drive over there, and it used to be terrifying to just cross the mountains because it was going to take weeks. Right, right, right. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, number nine, anesthesia. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It says right. right here, before 1846, they just drugged people up with opiates or got them drunk. Yeah, this is going to hurt. Yeah, and just bite that's, on this. That's better prep, though, than what you normally have to do. Like, fast, don't <laughs> eat anything before after midnight, don't drink anything. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get hammered. <laughs> Surely I won't bleed out. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, before a little dental surgery, just, you know, get you loaded. To, they used to put cocaine in people's gums and up their nose. Oh, right. It works. Just to numb everything. There was a massive opioid crisis because it was the doctors that were just, for you know, using it as anesthesia. For sure. And it's painkillers. Good and job. It's just a, it worked. It's a toxin you could go buy at the drugstore. Right. Remember Wyatt Earp's wife kept drinking. That's exactly right. Great movie. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's so current. <laughs> These are the 10. That Wyatt sounds never Look at her go. <laughs> just drinking the bottle. These are the 10 most important inventions of all time. Number eight, cars. Well, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Number seven, computers. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised that's not higher. Yeah. And maybe I would have a little bit more of a pre- appreciation for them if I ever grew up at a time without them. You know, I was born in 1990, so... Don't computer, rub it in. Just computers shut already up started. and move on. I already knew what computers we know. were. We had to use typewriter. You had to, had to know how to spell Because the problem stuff. is, I just sit here and, and get angry at computers all the time. Every single day now, I come in here and get angry at computers. That is, And you bring in your own. Right? <laughs> that I is, do. That is very fair, but... You don't understand like having to go to the library and look up stuff. Exactly. The Dewey Decimal System. I was about to say, Dewey didn't get me, man. My friend's got an encyclopedia set. I'm going over. Now, it's from 1967, but it's the most current we have, because yeah. that was our Google. It says, we hope to get on the moon one day. I, we got T. <laughs> you got the letter T. We never, we never bought the whole set. Go to the library, get the map, so we can find out how to get to grandma's. <laughs> These are the top ten most important inventions of all time. Number six, I'm amazed it's not higher, the television. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah, entertainment's important. It, it is. Used to be you had, you had to go to all the games. You had to go to all the games, but also it was good, you know, but politicians would disagree, but radio and television did a lot for the average citizen in real time to hear what they're saying. Sure. Instead of reading about it three days later or whatever, it's kind of the first social media. It's the first time you ever got to not necessarily interact, but heard someone at the time they were speaking without having to physically be present. Right. How many yeah. how many great presidents of the past wouldn't be so great if we if we knew what they were saying in real time? Imagine like the Gettysburg Address as we perceive to be this great statement. But think about what's going on in the on in the country at that time. Right. You matter if he was on Twitter. <laughs> Abe Lincoln, you can suck my. Right. <laughs> it would have been the same crap. Great enough, the guy had the strangest stutter. He just couldn't get over it. Right. Yeah, and he has a beard. With no mustache. How tall Turn his head upside down. He looks the same. How tall does your hat have to be? It doesn't have to go all the way up there, big guy. <laughs> I know. He's already a tall guy. Yes. <laughs> and he's rubbing it in. A new survey ranked the, the top ten most important inventions of all time. Number four, the light bulb. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's I, very specific. Does, like the wheel come into this at all? Like just basic. You no, got a car, I mean, it stuff, go, I, I don't think so. They're not saying electricity. They're just saying the light bulb. Okay. Right. I accidentally skipped number five, the internet. Okay. Which again, yeah, I would think would be a little bit higher because that absolutely changed the the way that we bring information to people. Well, electricity kind of makes a lot of these things work. Well, sure. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. These are the 10 most important inventions of but, all time. That said, you can have electricity, but if we don't do these other things, then it's pretty useless. Think about it, radio waves have always yep. been around. It's when we figured out how to make a radio that we can take advantage of it, right? And speaking of that, did you read number 11, Mike? Radio was number 11. Yeah, that is Number correct. 11. We just can't win. So Almost close. did it. Close. <laughs> Let's see here. Number three, vaccines. Yeah, I, I would rank that even higher, but yeah. A lot, of, uh, a lot of bad things have been wiped out thanks to that. Well done. These are the ten most important inventions of all time. The telephone. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was not a phone guy, but yes. The problem the is, is that we things. cycled out the telephone. Used to be this grand technology. Oh, sure. my God, we could talk to people next door without actually being next door. And then we could actually hear their voices. And then as time went on. 
We didn't want to hear their voice anymore. And so we just text text messages. It's like answering the door. Right. If you don't know someone's coming to your house, you're not. It's like, I'm not answering this. (laughs) I don't know this number. I think it's still nicer to hear people's voices. It is. Sure. I mean, you could write letters, but you kind of had to guess. But that's what Skype is for. After my my fifth text back, I'm, I'm, I'm calling you. Right, because I don't have the time for this. Like, what? <laughs> Just get it all right. out now. I've done that too. Are you done? You keep sending me text. What do you need? I'm on the sixth hole. Leave me alone. Yeah. And this is the <laughs> number one most important invention of all time, and it has totally not been mentioned multiple times already. Electricity. Oh, oh there it is. Okay. There it is. So a top of chain. How did indoor plumbing not make this list? Let's see. It does actually have some of the other ones here. The steam engine trains, cameras, the printing press, clocks, optical lenses. Thank you. Oh, wait. Then we, we didn't invent electricity. You know what I mean? It, it does it, say technically the harnessing of electricity. Yeah, I was going to say it's a much different. Electricity's always been around. Right. It's, we didn't invent fire. We just figured out how to make it and use it. Because I put fire way up on that list as well, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. And we also got uh, the compass, boats, helicopters, and tractors. Helicopters. I, was, huh? I like the guy that put like meat on the fire. That's the guy. Shout you out like. to that dude. But you know, keep in mind, he's also now. I want you to think back to the times, right? So some guy goes, "I take meat, I put it on fire." Right? Obviously, it tastes better. All the stuff. He was also the first guy to attract lots of wild animals. He probably Correct. wiped out his entire tribe. Then they said, "Okay." Based on what Bob did in that other tribe, when we do this, we need some lookouts. <laughs> it seems the animals are really attracted to this, too. wonder what happens if it's hot. Let's see here. A man in Florida almost got away with stealing $1,000 worth of merchandise for $25. Ooh. How do you do that? I'll tell you all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are on the way one hour from now. In the meantime, let's get a contestant on the line for Profile. This will take caller 9 at 206-421-ROCK. In the meantime, we made it to drinking time. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org.